You're listening to the All In Podcast with your host, Shane and Blake, giving you a new perspective on the dental industry. Are you ready to go all in? Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Welcome to the All In Podcast, the podcast that brings you a new perspective on the dental industry. I am one of your hosts, Shane McElroy, and as always, I'm joined by my buddy, Blake McClellan. How are you, buddy? Back again. This time I didn't have to do the intro, which is awesome. I hate that part. Terrible at it. You got to be real cheese ball like me. Yeah, it's like uh, Price is Right-ish. It's good. I like Come it. on down. Hey, now. <laughs> <laughs> so where in the world are you, man? Home sweet home, baby. It's been a nice November. Uh, I'm barely going to hit platinum status this year, surprisingly enough, thanks to Delta's new algorithm. But yeah, I, I, I quiet down a little bit this this month, so it's good. But next, I go to uh, Cali, let's see, uh, Orange County, Greater New York, and then DIA over the next two weeks. Well, that sounds awesome, yet somewhat exhausting. Uh, <laughs> Although I'll be joining you out there for DIA. I'm looking forward to that. Just ordered some swag for us, buddy. We got some really cool sunglasses with our pictures coming in on it. So. I love it. I can't believe my face is all over some merchandise. I, that's, I never, if you would have told me a year ago that I would have my face, especially in one that is not too flattering either, <laughs> where I look like the Unabomber, uh, I would have told you, go screw yourself. There's no way in hell I was going to be on putting my face on some merch. Why we're going to give it away for free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew no one would purchase it, but that, that's impossible. Well, I'm also doing this not in my home. I'm actually in Baltimore right now. So, flew in for a day and flying out tomorrow, but brought my stuff with me so we could record a little bit. It's really the only time I get to do this later because usually I'm putting the kids to bed or something. Do you uh, get any blue crabs where up there? Um, no, honey, I didn't get any crabs while I'm up here. <laughs> <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing in Baltimore? So, I'm actually working with a rep and I do this, you know, fairly regularly working some big accounts that he has for teeth express. One of them is actually signed up the other one's looking to do it. And he's kind of by horizons, full arch branding, marketing solution, kind of more the content itself than anything else. And I've had a lot of experience with that over the years and marketing and social media stuff. So kind of segues into the topic when to talk about is kind of the branding strategy, kind of become an expert within bio and just trying to share what I know. Yeah, you know, it's funny. It's so nascent that right now everybody's still pioneering these pathways in the marketing and digital uh, advertising, personal branding, you know, your clinic or, you know, franchise branding. At the same time, like how to take your brand and penetrate the social media thing without buying your way in. And, and really now, because of everything going on with Facebook, you can't buy your way in. They've kind of really tightened everything up. So it's, it's, it's kind of scary at the same time because uh, there's so many people trying different things. But, you know, it's, at the same sense, it's also a beautiful time for a startup company or a startup brand or a young clinician trying to get yourself out there or a KOL. You can really, if you adapt it, crush it. I mean, for free, just time. Yeah. And speaking of that, like crushing it, right? Like we're both big Gary V fans. What's really cool is he just had a podcast episode with Harvest Dental, Sasha, the CEO over there. And I messaged him on Instagram, actually introduced us about the podcast and kind of we'd love to talk about what the strategy was that it gave you and kind of where you're going with that. And so he just emailed me back a few minutes ago. And so he's going to be on an upcoming episode. And so I think that's like, for us, it's kind of cool because we're like one step away from Gary, right? Like how funny is that though? It's, it's, we're talking about Gary V in a, in a dental lab, and TikTok and, you know, look, I mean, these words that are being thrown around now in dentistry as kind of the, what's in the scope right now. I mean, this is what every company is putting in their scope now looking ahead like, oh shit, like we, we need to wake up. Something's happening here and we need to get involved with this. And, you know, a guy like Gary Vee can, I think he charges like a hundred thousand dollars an hour for consulting or something like that. I mean, we try to get him to speak at DIA and it was just crazy. The guy is amazing, but you know he was still in what a t- uh, thirty-minute podcast, able to just really come up with some great concepts for that dental company. It's more about the branding stuff. I mean, and that's what his message was: it's branding, brand it. it it's it, we're in an age where we're so used to products letting us down, customer service letting us down that reliability is kind of shot now. I mean, you're so used to your cable barely working, your internet always going out. You know, your car malfunctions a lot. You have to get a new one every 
two to three years or three to four years now versus every five to seven. You know, you're uh, it, it's I think we're used to being let down by product quality that now it's again, it's who's making the most noise and who can we really get behind is like the brand culture. Yeah. And so what I've noticed lately, we, the funny thing about dental is it's always behind in everything, right? Like this is already going on in other industries at a, at a very high level. It's just new for dental. Instagram, oh my God, it's brand new for dental. Not really. Uh, it's kind of, it's at maturity, right? Like there's millions and millions and millions of people who are already using it every single day. But for dental companies, it's brand new. It's something scary and they don't know how to jump in. What are they saying at like companies like yourself, right? You're, you're a big company without getting yourself in trouble. I mean, what is the dialogue at a, a, at a big company like that? What, what's the banter? You know, are they saying like, oh, we need to put some ad dollars behind this or, oh man, we need to hire a social media team like Wendy's or like, what's, what's the thought process? Fortunately, right now, I, you actually met with Stuart the other day. We all sat down together and had, you know, he kind of picked your brain on some ideas and Stuart's our, our director of marketing for implants. And you came up with a cool idea. I can't give it all away right now because we're actually going to try to move forward with it, but it's, it's basically not hiring another company, not doing this. It's actually doing the kind of organic way and natural way. Um, we're just stealing Blake's great ideas and, and leveraging those. You know, you know, sometimes that coffee just, or, or that matcha tea, it works really well, you know. you going to get like a taxi and run the meter when you start going. Yeah. <laughs> no, and, and I like Stuart, you know, he, me and him connected on Instagram and, you know, that just gives credence to what we're talking about here. There's a new paradigm shift in the way the commerce is generated in not only the dental industry, but the medical industry. You know, we're, you're, we're seeing this pivotal change with LinkedIn. And now we're really understanding that, hey, maybe it's not just a job search tool. It's a networking uh, platform. And we really embrace that network aspect of it. It's become really good about news articles and, and blogs and webinars and now with the live streaming on LinkedIn. And it's becoming a great asset, I think, to, to reps uh, and clinicians. I've, I've seen a lot of clinicians now starting to post cases on there. Um, they're, they're showing... You know, their news updates, like I saw a guy posting about how he just got his Yomi robot and he's showing a little demonstration. So it, it's really grown out to be something a lot uh, more beneficial to the medical industry than just a job hunt, you know, platform. No, for sure. And, and I think you approach that platform differently, right? Like I won't be as goofy on there as I would be on like, say, an Instagram where I'm doing stupid posts all the time because it's just, I don't care. But on LinkedIn, it's kind of like your resume out there. So do you want to put that on your resume? So the approach to the platforms are different too. Yeah, I would think like in LinkedIn and Instagram, you know, think of those two combined as a mullet, right? Business in the front, party in the back. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, you want to you wanna look clean and polished on Monday morning there on uh, on LinkedIn and, and seem all professional. And then, you know, on, and on Instagram, it can be the behind the scenes, if you will. I know a little bit. I'm pretty dangerous with some of this stuff, but you really have have owned this space for for our industry for a little while now on the leveraging social media for brand building, right? Let's take a couple different aspects, if that's cool with you, and say if I'm an educator, self branding, or if I'm a company, or if I'm a practice, is that cool with you? Go back and forth, and do that. Yeah, of course. All right. Well, let's start with like, all right, we got a bunch of buddies who are educators and and kind of key opinion leaders, and they're always looking for ways to you know enhance or build their brand. So let's take somebody who's kind of just getting into the the speaking or lecturing game or wants to. What platforms would you start with and how would you approach it? You know, it's funny that you say that. I actually just had a call this morning um, with a buddy of mine, Jake Planick. Shout out to him. He's got a client of his that's he's just helping out. He's he's works at a lab. Uh, it was, uh, I think it's Drake Labs. And he's just helping a guy who's really talented um, out. And he's looking to start speaking and teaching courses and stuff. So we had a call this morning about doing some stuff together. And, you know, I was trying to explain that you have to kind of take a high level approach to it and, and do that 30,000 foot view of what you're looking to do with your your brand and then go from there. I mean, and Shane, we were just in a tech stud with someone this week about something like that. You know, it it's if you look at some of the people that have done very well for a long time in the dental industry as a speaker, a la, let's say, Carl Misch, Michael Picos, John Coyce, uh, Frank Spear. Uh, you know, these these guys have really built a brand that can be a legacy for them. And, and they wanted to build like an educational academy that maybe could expand outside of their personal direct time, right? 
and outside of just speaking on a podium. And so I think with that, you've got to one, decide that pathway. And then once you do start dissecting your content out and distributing it out through the different platforms. And so Instagram's your more humanized approach to your brand. I think LinkedIn's your more informative announcements, tickets, release, you know, courses, things like that. But as long as they're seeing you everywhere, I think that's kind of the key, right? We know Google because you couldn't get away from it. You know, right? it was everywhere. It became a term, a household name, Google, Google, Google. And so that's essentially what you're trying to do with your own personal brand, right? I mean, Shane, what do you what are, what is your opinion on that? I mean, what do you what do you think is the most important thing when you're going forward as a speaker? Because you you help a lot get started. Yeah, I, I do. And I think it's kind of picking. So you got to start here first. You got to or where am I going to attack, right? What what segment of the market am I going to hit or that hasn't been approached? You know, we talked about the other day about, all right, I'm going to teach on the basics of implant dentistry, or I'm going to teach on this specific thing and really focus on that and be a champion for that. So like, let's say we pick our niche of what we're going to talk about. We'll start posting content on that on a regular. All right, let's say on LinkedIn, you want to be professional with it. So maybe I, I'd say like LinkedIn, you write an article on there. That's an easy way to get people to see a blog post that they would never see before, no matter how much money you spend on it, like on Google or Facebook trying to drive people there. They'll naturally organically see it there. And That's that a- could be outsourced, right? Like they could instruct the blog structure, but you could simply have someone that you hire to write that for you, right? Like a, like a ghostwriter in a sense. Correct. But there's some stuff where I've kind of ghost written stuff and not the final form, but like I wrote the idea down. But if you read it, you know me, it's like they're good through halfway through. You're like, what the hell are you saying here? So you need to have somebody who can write it in a specific format, make it make sense. I, I think too, what I've seen on LinkedIn lately is um, if you're one tagging people does really well tagging a person or two, but the, then the hashtags in the post, you know, using about two to three uh, hashtags in your post. It's really helping, I think, aggregate out. But I also think they're doing something similar to Instagram with the first window of time when it's shown to an audience and how they respond. And that depends on if they show it to the the remaining audience. Because I'll see a lot of volatility in my posts. Uh, Some will have like, I've had like 7,000 views on a lot of posts on just middle of the day, weekend, doesn't matter. And then some will have maybe, I don't know, maybe 800 500, something like that. So I think that really based on how people initially respond to it. No, for sure. And I think the more content you post, the better. And I don't mean that in, as long as it's good, you don't want to just throw shit out there. Yeah. You got to be careful of that, right? You don't want to just be that guy. That's just, like you said, just throwing shit everywhere. I mean, just reposting every article you see and all that. We don't need that. Bring, bring some, some context to it. If you're going to repost something. Yeah. Either share stuff that's relevant and, and you can, attach it somewhere, or or I want to share this with you guys for A, B, and C and share that on LinkedIn or write your own. And I think that's always the best if you can have your own original content, but I do think it's good to share information with the industry. That's always good too, because that'll get you some traction if it's a really good article. Share your experiences on stage, right? Like show that you're speaking at places. Like really, if you're going to try to be a speaker every time you're on that podium, take a, have someone take a nice photo of you while you're on stage and post that and share it. Thanks for the whatever organization for having me out. Give them a shout out. They'll love that. And that are again showcase that you're a speaker and lets a lot a lot of these companies know that hey this guy or this girl is looking to get out there. Yeah, I think that's perfect for LinkedIn. Like you're you're actually at the podium speaking, whatever you got a still shot or a quick video shot, that's awesome. And to put some context to it. And then I think on Instagram, now that's when you do kind of your your buddy shots with the doctors you're speaking for, and then maybe record like uh, uh, if you follow Millennial Dentist or Buddy Soli. He does an awesome job about when he's walking through the airport or going about to travel, about just saying where he's going, how he's doing it. And then it shows the real life behind it. So it's almost like watching little snippets of a reality TV show and people connect with that because it's real. No, I agree. Um, That that's a big part of it. That's the Instagram story effect, right? This behind the scenes stuff really can make you relatable and, and, you know, helps people empathetically attach to you as your brand. They they really like to hire speakers that they want to have a beer with or something, you know, and or that you know that you see these these speakers out there doing karaoke or like David Wong uh, is notorious for eating a lot of food or going to work out, right? So, <laughs> you know, the, that's part of your brand. I mean, p- they, people can identify that with that, and they want to experience that with you. And you would have never seen that years ago. 
and, and I guess there really wasn't the platform for it, but it was put on this character who you were. I mean, frankly, honestly, uh, you guys don't know this, but when Blake and I talked about doing this podcast, I wanted to come out and really just be a stiff with it, like what everybody else was doing. That was That's what I thought would be good. And you told me, hey, dude, just be yourself. Like, that's that's what people want. And since we've done that, it's been, you know, I think our content's pretty damn good. And more importantly, it's fun. Yeah, I mean, it's a no BS society. I mean, it's all about transparency. I mean, you're seeing now on Twitter, we see our president tell us what's going on and he's bashing this news platform or whatever. You know I mean? We're in an era of transparency and people are smart enough to see through the lines and the BS. And so I think with the influencer thing, wave that hit uh, Instagram specifically, but also YouTube, it was these very superficial, good looking or whatever, uh, extreme people. And that's what created the the attention on the platform. And, and then it segued over into being more about authenticity because all these influencers were getting deals with Marriott, with uh, Porsche and all this stuff. And they didn't give they didn't give a shit about the brands. They didn't care at all. They were just like, this is awesome and this is going to look good on my Instagram. And so they really kind of abused these companies and, and ran with it. And then to the point where now we have this term called micro influencers and it's about having, you know, a few thousand followers and um, versus a million, you know, because of the impact and the conversion. So, it, you know, it's, it's, it's a weird time that now it's all about authenticity. I mean, look, even Kylie Jenner just cashed out. I think she knows it's coming. That yeah, she sold fifty one percent of her brand for like what was it four hundred six hundred million dollars for her basically her, <laughs> right? and it essentially was because of her Instagram. You know, we had uh, when we built our first version of Implant Compare, it was just a an iOS uh, deployment, and our developer that was d- building it, he got hired by Facebook uh, during this time, like right at the end of the project release, and so he went over there and we keep talked with him and he was hired as like a senior engineer, very, very sophisticated guy. One of the smartest people we, I've met in the tech side of things. And he was hired specifically. One of his first projects was to figure out why Justin Bieber left the Instagram platform. And it was purely because they were confused at why their computer program failed them. And it was really just human behavior. Something was going on with the guy, right? Whatever. But they were saying like, there's a scientific reason they've got to fix this because that's what made that platform happen where people like Kylie Jenner and, you know, Justin Bieber and stuff, but they really do care about those people. They, that that's what makes it happen is the influencers. Oh, hundred percent. And I think one of the ones that, you know, you hear Gary Vee talk about like too is TikTok. And so if you're building a brand, I would attack TikTok right now because you can pick up, you know, a hundred thousand followers a lot easier there than you can on Instagram. And then it flows over. I see guys on there with like the, the Bentist. I have no idea who this guy is, but he's an orthodontist. I think he's got like, it's just some crazy amount of followers that you would never even get on Instagram. I think maybe a million or something. And he's got like 40 or 50,000 on Instagram too, which is fantastic but he's an orthodontist. So it's like, that's his demographics. He's younger, you know, he dances a lot and whatever, but um, that's a new up and coming platform. And I haven't really attacked it yet, but it is fun to go through. I've enjoyed, you know, using it. You know, that's a good point. So one thing to keep in mind when doing this, figure out what you're good at. I just did my first TikTok tonight. I was messing with my wife. We were watching a movie and I was like, she passed out, you know, so I made my first like TikTok video and I was thinking about how hard it was. I mean, I've been thinking about my first post for weeks on that platform. I'm like, how do I use this? What do I, I don't understand how to even get started with this. Like, what do I do? And so, you know, you've got to be really creative, but understand, like figure out which one you're the best at and know that there's continuity so that you can always convert them to your other platforms. Like bloody tooth guy. I think he just launched a YouTube channel this week or something, you know, and he's got a ton of uh, followers on that now. So you can always take and own whatever platform you're best at and then work on converting them to these other platforms as you figure them out. You don't have to try to be good at all of them at the same time. No, I think you're probably going to kind of be awesome at one. Okay. At another good at one kind of stuck at this one and you just work on it. But I I think you just kind of own the space you're best at too. Um, and you can use a lot of the same content just in different, you know, varieties on different platforms. So, you know, the amount of content it takes to stay on these platforms and listen, I I can't keep up with it all too. I know it's a lot of work, but you know, 
we, you know, what we should be doing is video ourselves, you know, podcasting right now and then use that on a LinkedIn, right? Or use it on, do a goofy face and do it on TikTok or something. You know, we don't even take advantage of all the opportunities because it's not hard to put it on my iPhone. You know what I mean? No, you're absolutely right. And I think that's, it, it, there's a fine line to it too, right? You, there's a lot of people that come to me and go, okay, yeah, this is great, but you know, I already hate my phone enough, right? It's like, I'm on this thing too much and this and that. And, you know, the burnout will happen with it. You'll get annoyed. I mean, heck, your neck will start cramping up from being on your phone too much. <laughs> I mean, it's, it, you've got to find a balance. And when you're doing content creation, and you've got to find a way to take one piece of content and extract it, extract it to being 10 pieces of content. So whether it's one video that you do on TikTok and then you post it on Instagram and then reshare and then you post it on Twitter with a nice little quote or whatever. And then, you know, you reshare it in other platforms in different ways. You can save yourself a lot of time and energy. But again, f- figure out which one you're going to be the best at and then the others will follow. Like Scott McLean, great speaker. Uh, you know, he's a big Nobel speaker and he's got over a million views on some of his videos on YouTube. Does a really good job. His son, I think, does like extreme sports. He's like an influencer in like the extreme sports arena or something like that and does a lot of cool videos. And so he's helped him with that, but he he crushed it on YouTube. And so now he's starting to build all the other platforms up. He's doing a good job. One platform we haven't mentioned is is podcasting too. To me, that's social media. That's all it is. We're just using our voices to do it. And I think people think it's this big production, but let's just be honest. If we can figure it out, you know what I mean? It ain't that complicated. And I think it's a really powerful tool that is, although you see lots of podcasts out there, like it, number one, it's fun to do, but if you're building a self brand, it's a great way to get your opinions, your voice, whatever matters to you out there, just like we're doing right now. And I think that you see some guys taking advantage, Justin Moody's doing it, you know, Peter Bolton, uh, you got T-Bone doing it, a bunch of other guys doing it as well. But I think that's an easy area to jump in quick, um, and take advantage of it before everybody's doing a podcast. Yeah. And it's definitely a lot easier for introverts. So, you know, Posting and selfies and stuff and videos on Instagram is a challenge for a lot of people, and I get that. I'm a lot like that myself. I don't share a lot of my faces in their videos personally. It's more about my, you know, where I'm at or whatever, you know. And you're fugly. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm just not. You know, I got a face for radio, so fortunately, podcasting is easier. So I got a face for podcasting, and um, yeah, you know, I really enjoy it, and I think you can feel a little bit more comfortable. So that also is part of again finding out which one you're better at and and just own it and for me i definitely love the podcasting i I do like posting on linkedin uh, a lot i've really gotten into that a lot more and started to kind of grow my audience on that um but you know instagram is really becoming competitive and there's so much saturation uh that your content's going to get diluted quite heavily so it's really about consistency don't oversaturate where they don't want to follow you anymore. You know, it's really, you got to make sure it's quality content. I think that it's a few pieces of media a week for me right now with the, uh, like on the feed. And then with the story, I try to post like two to five uh, a day uh, just to kind of keep a nice little even balance and kill and, 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 and consistency with it. And try not to over spam them either. That's the other thing. A lot of people think that when, as a company, when they're on Instagram, that's the biggest mistake they make is it's like straight out of the catalog, straight promotional stuff. That's not what people want to see. They want to see your influencers using your stuff that they're people that they like and they follow or using your products. Yeah. We had a rep who actually called me with bio and he's like, I'm really not gaining the traction with on my Instagram and my Facebook group. And I go, bro, all I see is is our brochures, basically, or images you'd repost that Buy Horizons has done. I go, it's an advertisement all the time. Would you want to do go to a group or follow that same stuff for a different type of company? Probably not. And so he it kind of opened up his eyes. I go, what do you love? And he goes, well, I love playing music. I go, well, then maybe just don't show your face or something if you want to make it like that, like Bloody Tooth Guy and, you know, play some riffs, say implants or riffs or just do something like that. It will be a lot more fun. You'll enjoy doing it more and you'll actually get people to look at your content too, man. Yeah, the one thing I always stress during my lectures are is to to always make sure that you are humanizing your brand. And, 
you've got to put a face to it. You've got to put, a, or if not a face, a, a story behind it, more or less. And that story is beyond just the products. The story is your employees, your clinical staff, the patients, the you know the lectures that you're at, the audience in your in your lecture. It just depends on what you're doing and what your pathway is. But you need to tell a story that complements that. Just be creative. Don't create document. I mean, I know that's Gary V's big thing is like document, but understand that there's an audience, and so. Just as documentaries are raw, you know, unedited, just the story, there's still a plot and they have to follow, right? There's a structure to it. So make sure that it's following your agenda. And it doesn't have to, I mean, again, share your weekend with the family, share nice dinners, things like that. That's great stuff because that's that humanizes your brand and it makes it relatable. That's how speakers are doing really well right now. The, the, the new wave is that they're just more relatable. They don't seem like this big god on stage. It's like, oh, of course, they're doing these great cases. Uh, they're, you know, the big, mighty, almighty, you know. Now it's like, man, that's an average Joe, and he's up there teaching, and, you know, he really makes it seem like it's easy, and I, I, I can do that. You know, I can really relate to this guy or this girl. And, you know, and that's, I think, what's the most important part of personal branding right now. It's what Gary Vee is doing so well. Well, that's why I like showing my kids and what we do, too, like, getting beat up by my kids with their swords and just taking me out and the craziness of my life because that's relatable. And I, I don't, one of the things I hate the most is when I'm introduced as a sales rep, I'm a person first. And, and so that's one of the reasons I want to show that stuff. This is just me, man. I just happen to sell implants too, you know? And I think that's important. You're humanizing yourself. I, I like that approach too, especially for self branding, right? You want to be relatable. But let's talk about it from like the business perspective. Let's let's relate this to some of our, our dental buddies or guys in the in the medical field. As a business, let's say I'm starting a new practice. Let's say we're an implant center or whatever. How would you approach it first? Because we've got a lot of friends who right out of the gates want to throw money at at AdWords and Facebook advertising and things like that. As a business, where would you start this? All right. Let me ask you this. Do you know the singing dentist? Know of the singing dentist? I know the dancing dentist. I don't know the singing dentist. The singing dentist is um, the guy in the UK so, did like dub overs of famous songs and stuff. You know, he's got like a, several million followers on Facebook and all that stuff. You know, the dancing dentist, right? Like, um, yeah, Rich Constantine. Great dude. Right. Right. So, you, you know, he went viral with the 15 second video. I think if you're going to start your practice or a brand, you need to find a way to make content like that that's relatable to that audience. Dovi Prero in in Beverly Hills, he has he's known for doing the Invisalign for all the rappers and stuff and influencers in L.A. So I mean he's just booked out the wazoo. I mean it's crazy how busy he is with all his patients and they're all famous influencers and they all post about him. Have millions of followers each one of them. So you've got to find a way if you're going like let's say you're doing full arch and you're gonna do you know you're in like Hilton Head, South Carolina. You know, obviously you need to run some ad campaigns on Facebook, but that are some nice emotional testimonial stuff and videos with captions on Facebook, right? Because that's where your audience is at because you're going after that demographic. So it, I think you, you've got to make the media just tailored to that. You've got to bring it in-house. You hire a local videographer, but you become the director for a couple of days and make some content that you would make you become a customer, make you become a patient, whatever we're talking about, right? Let's clarify the ad thing. I agree. I think you need to be on Facebook no matter what in the dental field because that is the demographic, you know, 40 and up, especially if you're, you know, family practice a little different, uh, ortho's a little different. That's fine. But everybody's on Facebook. I see that as like a secondary website. But I would say if you're going to do ads at the beginning, create your brand and have information or content that's interesting, not trying to convert them right away. You're basically asking them to sleep with you on a first date if you're advertised to say, do a $30,000 case with us tomorrow. And I don't know why they're not doing that because you're trying to ask your first date to go to bed with you. It doesn't make a lot of sense. So I think you build interesting content, something that's valuable to them, post or video, and you drive traffic to that and build a brand locally. And then down the line, use advertising for conversion after you've built that brand in the area. No, absolutely. That's a great point. Yeah, you've got to definitely get started first. And my point being is that you've got to know which your audience you're going after. You've got to become a marketer temporarily and go, okay, what demographic am I going after? And how can I do 
how can I make relatable content to them? If you want to do an exercise that, you know, I love doing, it's called uh, design thinking and you essentially do this empathy mapping. Um, Phil found or uh, Phil thinks says and does, right? You make this, this chart, this uh, quadrant, if you will, four quadrant deal where you put each one of those in there and you create this user. Let's say it's the 62 year old, and who needs a full arch uh, surgery done. And you then create and get in the headspace of those, those that demographic and try to understand what's relatable to them, what they like, what they're, you know, get in that headspace. And then you can understand how to tailor your content, right? Like think about what shows they like or what, what, what makes them make a buying decision. I mean, uh, same thing with, with if you're going for ortho and you're going to be going after, you know, parents and young patients make enjoyable fun content that's funny and humorous and makes it seem like a very family friendly audience and showcase your st- your team members and just make it seem like a very fun brand and i mean use the heck out of the social media tools that are free there but don't post generic posts that are just like happy thanksgiving or happy to stay and like don't do that it never works those are the worst man like i can't stand those and i've created some of those before so it's like Things have changed from even like two or three years ago where you wanted to have this really generic. I don't think you ever wanted like generic content, but that actually did okay. Now it's a death sentence. Like people will just not follow you ever. They'll block you for that kind of content because there's absolutely no value to to them at all. So I think one of the things I talk to people about all the time and, and the problem I had a lot of times with this stuff is I was overthinking it. And to your point, creating like an avatar of that person and empathizing, put yourself in their shoes and be like, would I like that? And if the answer is no, don't do it. You know, think about the things that you, the brands that you look at or watch or follow or whatever. Think about it. Why start breaking it out? Why do I follow that? Why do I like that post? Why do I like this or that? And then start thinking about your business that way. And another thing to do is talk to the, your target demographic. Any implant stuff, dude, I run it always by my mom. Hey, mom, do you understand? I don't get that. Then it's a whatever content I just created is a piece of shit, right? So I got to figure out, it doesn't matter what I think. It matters what the target demographic thinks about it too. So yeah, and there's a lot of companies advertising BS out there. Let's call it how it is. Most of the people that were teaching these social media seminars were out there hawking like BS programs. Um, And I'm just going to call them out straight up. Like they were terrible. 100 they're, they're out there saying they can take over your social media and hey we'll pay this and we'll build your site and we'll do this and then we'll handle your social media and stuff like that and like it's uh, they're paying you for nothing i mean it it's not getting you patience and you don't even know the pathway to it right and and a lot of them didn't even have a call to action where if a patient did like the clinic or whatever brand that they, there wasn't a link in the profile where they could go to the site and book a, an appointment and and instagram's got a ton of tools with that now or a lot of them wouldn't have a mobile friendly site. And then when someone would go to their site, they couldn't ever get anything to work because it was, it was all, you know, it's a gigantic website on their tiny little phone. So that was the thing is that a lot of people probably got frustrated in the dental space, uh, in the medical space. Like, man, we've hired some firm to do this. It's just pointless. So I've seen a lot of the mindset of people being that way where it's just like, yeah, but not really. I mean, come on. It's not. I mean, this is for kids or, you know, I hired a company. It didn't work. It's, it's pointless. There's a shit ton of money on the table. There's a ton of money on the table. And it's really free if you put in some, some effort. And it can really boost morale at your organization or your company by embracing it and having fun with it. I couldn't agree more. And I think it's it's different with a website, right? Like you may not know how to develop a website. Yeah, you should hire that out. That's cool. With social media, I, I flip, but you should not probably hire that. It is too simple and you have too many people in your practice who can do it. If you just let them do it, you may suck at it as the practice owner, but you're somebody on your team is on Instagram every damn day and they're doing it. You're paying them already to do it. They're just not doing it for you. So you probably don't even have to pay them more. Say like you got buddy over in the corner, got his back turned because he's posting on Instagram, call him out, be like, Hey bro, when they think they're in trouble, be like, you're so good at Instagram. I want you to do it for the practice. You're now the guru of, of social media. I didn't pay them anymore. They're not in trouble, so they're relieved. And now they're honored because you gave them some, you know, awesome task that they're really good at. And just let them go buck wild. You know, I I, had a, I actually had a, I was given a lecture on this 
and the guy's like, well, you know, I, but they're, you know, I don't know if they'll put good content out or how do I, pr- you know, get them to do it. I was like, tell them if they get you practice a hundred thousand followers, you'll give them $10,000. That's almost impossible for practice to not impossible, but very difficult. And if you get to that many followers and you have to pay them $10,000, it would have cost you so much more to hire a company to do it. You know, utilize your own employees who are already doing it any damn ways. Yeah, I mean, heck, I'd, I'd even lower that to like fifty thousand, make it a little bit easier, <laughs> and tell them like, hey, because you'll get. I mean, you're going to get patients. I mean, I know some full arch people that have gotten patients from uh, people that were following us, and then we did a live surgery with them. I mean, they got a, a full arch from that. I did a post when I was down in Jacksonville at Dunham one one time, and I got a comment from somebody saying, "Hey, I actually need an implant. Where are they at?" And, and they thought they were in Atlanta because. You know, it, my profile said I was in Atlanta and I sent him a link to, to a doctor I know and he got an implant patient off a of freaking post, you know, it, ha- it happens all the time and it doesn't work when you try to hire some firm to manage your social media for you. The biggest thing that these people say uh, that are, you know, talking about social media and the value of a brand is bringing it in in house you know, and understanding what you need to do. Now, look, you can hire a marketing firm 100% to help you brand. You know, branding may not be your expertise and that's okay. You don't need to do that. You can outsource that part. And there's a lot of great firms that can really help you narrow down your demographic and then give you a brand strategy. But for the execution and implementation of it is it's, it's gotta be on you and your team. And, and I think it's, you know, when you think about it from a, say a big dental, massive dental company, you know, the, all the reps need to embrace it. There needs to be a company culture around it and you need to make it enjoyable and embrace your employees and their content. You know, reps can be killing it right now with social media. I mean, this has been the easiest way to get to clinicians. You now can just go straight to the DM instead of going to deal with the front desk key holder. Never you know, slide right in, man. But like, like that was the worst thing about dental cells or medical cells is like the gatekeeper and now you can bypass it. And so, you know, I think it's great from all aspects and it's just how you want to use it as your tool, but figure out your craft and what's going to be the easiest to maintain. I think Instagram is definitely it still, it just understand that it's not easy and it's, it's not as easy as it was before either. I mean, when it need none of the platforms are, I mean, like you said, TikTok. if you can find a way that you can make that work for you and you can embrace that platform, you need to run with it right now. It, it is early and you can really tap into an audience and go viral fast. And that's the key. And then once you've gone, you've gotten that audience, you can then try to bring it over to your other platforms, Instagram, Facebook, where it may be and get them to follow you on those. The way to do it, man, you should have charged people for this one. You didn't do it again, man. You're screwing your yeah. I know. I know. We can't, if you got any sponsors out there that want to support us, we're hungry. Uh, we need to eat, so please feed us. That's all, Blake. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, and I think that uh, my closing argument here would be that understand that no matter what you want to do in life, in your career, if you've built a brand around yourself, you can take that anywhere. And whether you like him or you hate him, Donald Trump is an absolute proof of that. And so it, 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 there's, you just got to understand that no matter what, that man has understand, understood branding 101 and he slaps his name on everything and his brand will never die no matter what. Matter, I mean, again, he may go down in flames, especially if you watch the news today. I mean, but it, it's, it still doesn't matter. He'll still keep making money because he's built a brand that is lasting and he hit it from all aspects, TV, radio, politics. I mean, it's everywhere. And that's what you're doing with social media is you're just putting your brand and your name everywhere so that people just see it everywhere they go. Couldn't agree more. I look at it kind of this way. Take it from an employee perspective. If you were an employee, I happen to be an employee or an associate doctor or whatever, build your brand. If you do that, no matter where you go, you always take that with you. They can't separate it. Or maybe you'll be Kylie Jenner. They'll pay you $600 I doubt they'll do that with me. But it gives you leverage, right? You're building something for yourself. It's like building a business kind of. You have equity in yourself. Think of it that way. Build that brand because there's value there. And if you do it the right way, you can take that wherever you want to go and they can't take it away from you. As we wrap this up, though, guess who I'm playing this week in fantasy football? Is it me? (laughs) <laughs> are we tied i've been studying already dude i'm going to crush you this week bruh it's not even gonna happen like that like daniel you know he caught me sleeping it's a bad week last week i was just texting him about it today that hurt but now we're tied i want blood i want blood it's go time 
Bro, we're both, oh, I think like seven and four or something like that. So this is a big game, dude. This is going to move some spots in the rankings with the playoffs are coming up pretty soon. There's a lot of losers fighting for that eighth spot. I think we're both pretty safe in the playoffs, but I'm going to, th- I'm going to bring the hammer down on you. I'm not going to lie. I hope we can make it to the champs and we go to the finals and then we can make a really good wager on it. Take it to a, take it to social media and embarrass one another on, uh, on the, the interwebs. The interwebs. Awesome, dude. Well, as always, my friend, it's good to talk to you, brother. We'll catch you guys next time on the All In Podcast. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to the All In Podcast. See you next time.